Welcome to the Daily Race. Uh, man, we are in Jeremiah here today, Jeremiah chapter 36, and we're continuing our, our study here. Uh, today we're, we're seeing the, the opposition build against Jeremiah, specifically from the king, King Zedekiah. Uh, he's delivering messages of reform. He's delivering messages of judgment from God. And guess who doesn't want to hear it? The king doesn't want to hear it because he doesn't want to turn. He's, he's not, not, not one to go back. So uh, Jeremiah is in hiding. He, he's having to, to remain far away because he knows that, that the king, excuse me, he knows that the king will um, want to, to arrest him, kill him. Not quite sure, but it's not going to be good. So he uh, has a, a new plan. He's going to have, um, he's going to write down his prophecies. He's going to have a man named Baruch read them. So it says, during the fourth year that King, uh, that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king in Judah, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message right up to the present time. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent when they hear again all the terrible things I've planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. So to, to put them all down in, in one place. So remember, Jeremiah uh, didn't sit down and at one point, at one time, read the whole book of Jeremiah, right? These are prophecies that come... Um, a little bit at a time. So at this point, it's like, hey, write this all that everything I've given you so far, and have Baruch read them out loud to the people. So sent for Baruch, dictated it all, got them down, and sent him to go to the temple. So Baruch did as Jeremiah told him, in verse eight, and read the messages from the Lord to the people in the temple. He did this on a day of sacred fasting held in late autumn during the fifth year of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah. So it wasn't just on some random day. You know, he didn't go like on a Tuesday to the to the temple when no one was there. No, he, he went on, on a high, high celebration day. So places packed, people were there. He begins to read. People from all over Judah had come to Jerusalem to attend the services of the temple that day. Baruch read Jeremiah's words on the scroll to all the people. He stood in front of the temple room of uh, Gamariah, son of Stephania, the secretary, this room was just off the upper courtyard of the temple near the new gate entrance. Um, when Micaiah, uh, one of the, the temple uh, attendants, heard the message from the Lord, he went down to the secretary's room in the place where the administrative officials were meeting. Um, the secretary there, along with, with many other people, which I'm just not going to slaughter their, their, their names right now, <laughs> it says, when Micaiah told them about the messages that Barak was reading to the people, the officials uh, sent Judi, son, Judai, son of Nathiah, grandson of Shalamiah, the great-grandson of Cushi, we're going to put his whole lineage in here apparently, to ask Baruch to come and read the message to them too. All right, so they, they, they want to hear at least. This is a good thing. Um, so Baruch comes in, reads the scroll to them. When they heard the messages, they looked at one another in alarm. We must tell the king what we have heard, they said to Baruch. But first, tell us how you got these messages. Did they come directly from Jeremiah? So Baruch explained, Jeremiah dictated them and wrote them down in ink, word for word on this scroll. And I wrote them down in ink, word for word on the scroll. You and Jeremiah should hide, <laughs> the officials told Baruch. Don't tell anyone where you are. Then the officials left the scroll for safekeeping in the room um, of, Eli of Elishma, the secretary, and went to the tell the king what had happened. So... It's kind of a little bit of tension. Are they whose side are they on? Uh, they're terrified by what Jeremiah is saying, which means that they believe that he's a prophet. They believe that's going to come true. They know they need to tell the king because, well, everyone knows that there were prophecies being read in the temple. They also want the king to know because, well, he needs to do something about this. Like he needs to turn back to God. But they kind of know he's not going to. <laughs> they kind of know he's going to take it out on Jeremiah and Baruch. So they tell him, "Hi, like we're we're going to deliver this message, but you guys." get while the getting's good. So they, they go. They, 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 the king sent um, Jedui to get the scroll. He brought it back, um, and they all, they all read it there. Uh, it says, um, each time J Jedui finished reading three or four columns, the king took a knife and cut off that section of the scroll. He threw it in the fire section by section until the whole scroll was burned up. Neither the king nor his attendants showed any sign of fear or repentance at what they heard. That's the key thing there. They showed no sign of fear or repentance. Um, no desire to, to put into place. They just burned it piece by piece. Um, 
After the king had burned the scrolls on which Baruch had written Jeremiah's words, the Lord gave Jeremiah another message. He said, get another scroll and write everything just as you did on the scroll King Jehoiakim burned. Then they said to the king, this is what the Lord says, you burned the scroll because it said the king of Babylon would destroy this land and empty of its people. Now this is what the Lord says about King Jehoiakim of Judah. He will have no heirs to sit on the throne of David. His dead wide of you will thrown out to lie, thrown out to lie unburied, exposed to the heat of the day and the frost of the night. I will punish him and his family and his attendants for their sins. I will pour out on them, on all of the people of Jerusalem and Judah, the disasters I promised, for they would not listen to my warnings. So Jeremiah took another scroll and dictated again to his secretary Baruch. He wrote everything that had been on the scroll, King Jehoiakim burned in the fire, only this time he added much more. All right. Man, that, that, that rebellion that we have this in the midst of this prophecy we have a little bit of narrative a little bit of narrative to see how they responded to us it's one thing to say they didn't but to have this scene here where the king and his attendants are just listening to him read and just in such a visual way in such an, an obstinate way taking god's word the word of god cutting it throw it into the fire and just showing we're not doing anything with this 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 means nothing to us. Um, what utter rebellion. How, how far they have moved from God. And because of this, God says, your, your lineage is not going to continue here. That's why God had preserved uh, Jehoiah Chim uh, as a, a refugee in Babylon. Uh, one of you know, his, his uh, older, older brother. Um, it's his family line that's going to continue the royal family line. Not not his because of this. All right, let's let's go ahead and pause there. But man, when we hear God's word, what's our response? I mean, are, are we are we listening to it? Are we obeying it, or are we casting it aside? I would imagine. Uh, I don't know anyone that's, that's ripped pages out of the Bible and burned them in the fire. Um, but have we done that subconsciously? Have we come to to passages and parts where we're like, mm, not today? Oh, that might be good for other people, but, but but I'm I'm not ready to do that yet. Man, we need to have open hearts to what God's word says to us. Even difficult things, even things we don't want to work on, even things that are going to be difficult to do. Uh, we have God's power to help us, though. We have the Holy Spirit working inside us, guide us and direct us. God, help me to do what I don't feel like doing in this moment. All right, let's pray. God, we uh, we thank you so much just for the opportunity we have to, to have your word here before us, to, to have multiple copies, most of us here, uh, to be able to, to read your word and know what you, you would have for us, to have examples, good and bad, of people in the past, but just also your desires laid out for us, your, your heart, what's important to you, uh, what's, what you want for us, how you want us to live, how you want us to, our attitudes to be. God, help us to, to lean into that and not have the, the response that Jehoiakim has. Help us not to turn from your word and, and despise it. Help us not to treat it like, like trash, like something that's not important, but help us to treasure it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.